Today we're going to look at integrated rate laws and we're going to look at the change in the concentration of NO2 as a function of time and you can see I've got that data right here. Now with an integrated rate law I don't know what this looks like in terms of first order, second order, or so on. So I actually need to determine that graphically. So we're going to use Excel to do that. And the easiest thing for me to do is just graph these things because if the concentration is changing as a function of time and it's linear, then that would mean that it's, it's a zeroth order. So I'm going to click on highlight those, click on insert, come over here to charts, and then put in the one with the line to make it really easy to see. And that does not look linear to me. So. I'm going to hit delete and get rid of that. So let me do it as a function of, um, as a function that would look like a first order. So that is a natural log of NO2. So the easiest thing for me to do here is say, this is equal to this cell and drag it down. And then say, this cell is gonna be equal to the natural log, open parentheses, of this cell, close it drag it down. Okay, now if I plot these two and see a straight line, then I can say it's first order. So again, insert, charts, here. That looks like a straight er line. Mm, I don't know. So I'll move it down here. And just to be thorough, I'm going to plot it one more time as one over the concentration of NO2. And if I do that and get a straight line, I'll know it's second order. So these are all things we sort of know from class. So again, I'm just going to uh, bring the times over and say this is one divided by this. All right. Now I'll highlight these two things. Click on insert, go to charts. This, oh, that look, that's a straight line. If I've ever seen one, that is a straight line. So that looks like a, uh, okay, so I can say that I feel like I've got a second order reaction right here. So that is what I'm interested in. Let me put that down there. Now the slope of this line will actually tell me my rate constant. Now I can get that from the trend line or there's an actually a great way. I'm gonna put a cell here called slope and I'm gonna say this cell is equal to the slope. And Excel does a great job of telling me what things need to go in there. So if I put an open parenthesis, it says, give me my known Y's. Well, those are these, comma, my known X's. And those are these, right there. And the slope is 0.7742. So that is my rate constant, uh, 0.7742. Now, I actually can also use this to find the half-life. There's an expression for finding the half-life um, that you can use to get with the initial concentration and the slope. The equation for that is this. And coming back, what we can see here is I can say that this cell will be equal to one divided by parentheses because I need to have, I need to divide one by both of these things. This slope times the initial concentration, which is this 0.01, it's not, um, it's not 100, it's not this cell right here. So when I put in equals and enter, I'll get a 129.166. Now I'll round that to the right number of significant figures, but that is how we end up going from just data here to evidence for a second order reaction, a rate constant, and a half-life, all very quickly. Hope you enjoyed watching.